Hello viewers, welcome to my channel ITG Olympiads and AP Physics with Ambarish. Mm -hmm. And uh, many of you might be knowing that uh, from J uh, 2023 onwards, uh, you'll be having damned oscillations as part of J Advanced. And not uh, very many good problems are floating around in J literature on this topic. So therefore, I decided to take up this uh, problem from uh, Merriam Craig. This is problem number Merriam Craig 8.35 uh, Dynamics. So without much ado, let me straight away get into the problem. So synchronized damped oscillators. Let me read out the problem for you. Okay. Derive the differential equation of motion for the system shown in terms of variable x1. So what's happening here, there is one floor and there's a mass which can freely slide on this frictionless floor here. And there's another trolley which can frictionlessly slide over this or maybe uh, just call it a block. Uh, it can slide without friction here. This is spring connected K1 and K2. And then uh, this is connected uh, through a pivot joint to this uh, vertical link at point it's pivoted at A and this in turn is uh, pivoted to a uh, damper C1. Its damping coefficient is C1 which is uh, conventionally uh, NCRT calls it uh, represented using symbol B. So here uh, the damping coefficient is C1 and this uh, link can pivot freely about point O and uh, so what's going to happen you can see that uh, this block moves here and this moves uh, this will move in the, this direction they'll be moving in the opposite direction at every instant and this uh, rod will keep on twisting uh, i mean about pivot it will keep on uh, turning uh, simple harmonically so uh, we have to derive the uh, motion uh, i mean the differential equation governing the system in terms of variable x1 so that's what the question is derive the differential equation of motion for the system shown in terms of variable x1 neglect friction and the mass of linkage okay so this is massless linkages okay c1 and c2 are the damping coefficients of the two dampers which are shown in yellow these two are dampers the floors are frictionless okay hence also find the angular frequency of small amplitude damped oscillations this part would be trivial once you have the differential equation so if you want you can give it a try i'll get into my analysis right away okay so let's see what's happening here I am going to use the energy approach. So let's say this linkage turns through some angle theta at some instant of time. Uh, this uh, moves a little forward, this moves a little backward. So the linkage is at an angle theta with the vertical. So since the distance of uh, uh, the upper rod from the pivot is uh, A, so that means what if the this linkage turns through an angle theta, this goes uh, by a distance A theta and this goes by a distance B theta in this direction, right? So uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to write energy as a function of theta, kinetic energy and potential energy as a function of theta. And of course the energy is not going to be conserved, but we know that uh, if there is uh, viscous damping happening here, the power developed by viscous forces should be responsible for decline of mechanical energy, right? So I can say that rate of change of mechanical energy of the system will be equal to the power developed by the viscous forces acting through the dampers, okay? So that's the main concept. The rate of change of mechanical energy of the system must be equal to the power developed by the damping forces. So now what's the mechanical energy? See, if it moves by a distance A theta, the spring gets compressed by A theta and therefore the potential energy stored in the spring is half K1 A theta squared, right? And if its displacement is A theta, then its velocity is A theta dot, right? Where theta dot represents d theta by dt. Just uh, the, the derivative of a theta a is a constant, so and derivative of theta is theta dot. So half mv square for this becomes half m1 into a theta dot squared. Plus similar terms for the second block. For the second block, this uh, displacement is b theta, and therefore the spring energy is half k k2 b theta squared plus its kinetic energy half m2 b theta dot squared. Okay. So this is the mechanical energy of the system, and what will be the rate of change of mechanical energy? That will be the power developed by the dampers. You see, the force uh, of the damper is proportional to the velocity, right? So the velocity of this uh, link is uh, a theta dot. So force becomes uh, C into a theta dot. So this is the force and uh, the power developed is force dot velocity. So this is the force due to damper and velocity is a theta dot. And of course, force and velocity are in opposite, opposite direction in case of viscous damping. So power developed becomes a theta dot into c, c a theta dot with a negative sign. So that's what I've written. Here the power developed by the damper is uh, minus c1 a theta dot into a theta dot. So this is the power developed by upper damper. Similarly, 
the power developed by the lower damper is uh, force is c2 b theta dot and the velocity is b theta dot and minus sign for the cos 180 factor right so what i need to do is i just did need to differentiate the rhs of 3 and equate it to uh, the rhs of 4 and if you do that this is what you get simple differentiation you can readily verify so a theta squared so a square you can take outside and theta square derivative is uh, 2 theta into theta dot and 2 goes with the 2 and you can easily verify this is what you will get so this is the rhs of uh, equation 4 and this is the derivative of the equation 3 okay now i can just uh, divide this whole equation by a theta dot you can see theta dot is occurring everywhere in all the terms so you can uh, divide the whole equation by theta dot and rearrange and you will get equation number 6 so you can just uh, combine the coefficients of theta double dot theta dot and theta you can take the coefficients common and this is what you get okay but uh, we wanted the differential we already have a differential equation in terms of variable theta which is sufficient to find the uh, time period of oscillation but uh, the question asked us to find the differential equation in terms of the variable x1 so we can readily see that x1 is a theta so x1 dot is a theta dot and x1 double dot is a theta double dot you can uh, see i showed here so x1 is a theta x1 dot is a theta dot and x1 double dot is a theta double dot okay so just uh, substitute for uh, theta double dot theta dot and theta in terms of uh, x1 and then rearrange and this is what you get as the final answer okay so that's the differential equation governing the system and this is what we were interested in and now once we have this equation now it's trivial to find the angular frequency so the standard damped oscillation uh, uh, simple harmonic motion uh, equation okay and if we can compare this with uh, standard damped shm de uh, differential equation so x double dot plus b by mx dot plus k by mx double dot is equal to zero so this term serves as our b by m and this term serve, serves as our k by m and once i have b by m and k by m the frequency is simply given by standard result root k by m minus 1 by 4 b by m squared so so instead of k by m you put uh, uh, this term let me use another pen, pen so instead of k by m you substitute this term and instead of b by m you substitute this term and you have the angular frequency that's so that's my analysis for the problem i hope you enjoyed the analysis and if you did enjoy the analysis please do give a thumbs up to my video and please share this video as much as possible with your friends through whatsapp telegram discord or whatever medium you use for networking with your fellow students or preparing for je or olympiads and most importantly if you have not already subscribed to my channel please do subscribe to my channel right away because that's what keeps me motivated to do a new video almost every day and thanks a lot for watching this video and i'll see you in the next one and as always God bless you all. Thank you.